Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. I am so glad to have you back checking out what Chris and I are up to. So in today's video, yep, I've been dumpster diving, looking at the side of the roads, anything propped against a tree or, you know, found in a barn <laughs> of old windows. I have quite an obsession. I just, the character of an old window is just something special to me. So when I see them when I'm out and about, I have a hard time passing them up, even though Chris thinks I have a little bit of a problem. I don't, I don't see a problem, you know. So anyway, in today's video, I am, we are actually making over some windows, sharing the process and the vision with you all of what we do to these items to get them all pretty for home decor, along with some frames. Yes, the, another thing I have problems with is when I see old frames with all that character, I can't pass those up either. So I'm throwing in this video. So I believe it is a lot. <laughs> what was it, 15 or 16? I can't even remember right offhand. I think I'll throw that in the title. But there was one window that got me. It was not really wood. <laughs> it was vinyl. Once I got cleaned it up, I'm like, uh, yeah, no, we will redonate this one. It's just, I, I I can't see the vision for that and I can't distress that piece very well. So, and it was double pained is still, anyway, let's get on with this video. So it's definitely in that season where people are cleaning out, they're garage sailing, they're whatever have you, but yes, they are cleaning out their stash of windows and willing to get rid of them. And I am willing to take them off their hands. So very seldom is a old window cup nice and tidy in a safe place. Oh no, they're usually in a barn, a shed, out in the weather. So they're rather kind of filthy. There's no other way. So before starting any of these projects, I'm going to go ahead and vacuum them off, get them cleaned off, and then I'm going to assess taking off any of the hardware to get it prepped and ready for what I'd like to do with it. So now that I have the unpleasant <laughs> job done of cleaning these windows, I have them taped off. I just prefer to tape them off instead of scraping so much. Still, they're still scraping to be done, but at least I have them clean and they're ready for their first coat of paint. I find most of the time the windows are painted, but occasionally I do run across some that are not. And for whatever reason, that unfinished wood, whoo, it likes to bleed through my white paint. So this one is going to have to get quite a few coats of shellac to stop that from happening. And then I have this other window, which I think is more of a cabinet door than a window, um, that I'm also going to go ahead and put a couple coats of shellac, which is going to prevent my bleed through on my white paint. I realize you could leave these windows as is, but the unfinished edge always gets me. So I'm not going to pre-sanding any of these. I like the character of them. So I'm just going to be covering them up with a couple coats of the Kills paint and primer in one in the flat white. And after I finished that fresh key, clean paint on all of them, I didn't feel the need to show you every single window. It's all the same on each of them. Yep, I'm going in with some 220 sandpaper and just distressing those edges, giving that character back, but with a cleaner look. Because I want to spend my time with you all sharing my wonderful ideas that I came up with for these windows. So just recently I had done some thrifted trash dumpster diving of frames and this kind of fell out under the same category with the windows and the frames here but when I saw those little fabric flags that I made, I kept running into windows with flags underneath them. So in my search, I wanted to figure out how you did these without cutting up your flags. And yes, I thrifted this flag. I, find, I see them in the thrift stores all the time. So yep, I'm going to pick out what striping and how many of the stars I want. And then I will use tacks, upholstery tacks, to tack it onto the window and then fold it up nicely.
Now, not only did I cut some backing for this to protect that flag, then I glued it around, not gluing onto the flag. I left a little bit of an edge for myself. And just a side note that all these windows that can get backings will get backing along with that hanger system. So next one up is one of my favorite papers from Roy Cycle Decoupage Paper. Oh my gosh, I love this chicken. <laughs> so this is really actually a simple one. This is just that cabinet door, which I'm, it's still a window. It's got glass in it. So I am just going to Mod Podge it, fit it into the window area itself. It's going to cut a little bit off, but the main focus will still be there. I really don't like to cut the paper when it is wet. It tears more than it cuts, but on these corners, I'm gonna relieve some of that pressure. I'm gonna find that corner. I'm gonna make a slit all the way to the corner just so it'll fit in there nice and snug. And then just use my finger to make sure that I'm down into that window sill. I set it off to the side, let the Mod Podge dry. I find that I don't like to, I just like to put the underneath coat to glue it on. And so now I'm taking an X-Acto knife and a ruler and cutting off that excess. And to seal my paper in, I like to use a polycrylic, so just a nice coat to cover. Even though I will be putting a backing on this one and a hanging system, I just like to make sure that that paper's not going to slip over time. <laughs> and that for this one, we are going to replace those rusty, crusty hinges. I absolutely love them as is. I don't think I could have put patina on them any better. Okay, so I have this large, this is large window. So look at what I ran across. Some birds on a branch and decoupage paper, kind of like the IOD transfers, but on a little bit bigger of a scale, though it's not going to completely fit my window, but I'm going to piece and part and make it work. So I actually have two windows that I am doing that are similar that have the the two panes. So I'm going to cut this piece apart, use what I need from the one piece to fit this window, not completely, you're still gonna see some clear glass, and use the leftover piece for the other one. Now that I have those little pieces of parts of birds cut off the end, I which I, I do kind of think, okay, I should have tore them like I'm going to be doing here, but you know, everything's kind of in the process of creating. And yeah, anyway, so I'm doing a little bit of water on a paintbrush to tear this paper to give it that nice, uneven edge. So now this is the point where I need to figure out how much I'm going to steal. It's just too much blank space on this window. So I do know I need to steal. And so I'm finding the re occurring pattern which is that little birdie right there and so I'll cut around that outer edge for this other window. Yep, I had to cut out a few extra pieces of the way I cut. I should have left it on, laid it on top of each other and then traced around where I needed to cut. But like I said, I'm just in the process and filming everything I'm doing for you all. So I'll give you any tips and tricks of what I think I should have could have done better. So yep, I'm just tearing the edge a little bit more, making it a little bit more frayed like the top. And then I'm going to Mod Podge it onto the window. Now the hardest part will be trying to match up the branch 
because I'm doing a reverse. So I'm laying it flat so that when you go to clean the window, you're not rubbing on the paper itself. It's going to be behind it. I don't want that excess to dry on the window, so I'm just taking a wet wipe and wiping that off. At least for this smaller window, I don't have to try to piece anything together, just Mod Podge it on. Now, after letting that underneath layer of Mod Podge, I'm going to go back in with Mod Podge only because I don't want to spray polycrylic and get it onto the glass. So just sealing this in with some Mod Podge. This won't get the cardboard um, paper backing only because you'd see it through there. So now we're going to move on to doing a little bit of stenciling with my Cricut. So I just picked a font that I liked and I for the larger window I'm doing bless our nest and for the smaller window I'm doing our nest so just something to go along with the bird theme there and then once I figure out my sizing that doesn't make it all wonky as I'm stretching it um, because that large window is like 33 in something inches so and you're you know that your larger cricket mat goes 24 inches and yes i could try to piece it together but I, vinyl on glass sticks really well and i don't want to accidentally go wonky on one of my words so i'm just going to stretch it out as much as i can on the 24 mat and just center it in so and then i will stretch it down for the height just whatever will stretch. I think I've got seven inches I can work with it. That's how I kind of choose. I just don't want to distort my letters. After I got that all set, I just flipped my image so that way that I am doing it on the back of the glass just like the paper. I'm going to go through. I'm going to find my center. I'm going to mark it off with a little piece of tape where my center is, measuring both my sides before flipping this sticky thing <laughs> over onto the glass. Did you all watch my video on bringing out the whites after Memorial Day furniture flip? This is the leftover piece from the bottom of that barn. And as if you watched that, you know I have two of them now. So anyway, yes, I'm going to be putting it on this window. But no, I'm not going to put it on this window pane. Yep, I'm going to mirror effect doing an antiquing type of mirror effect where you spray vinegar. I so in my spray bottle i have a mixture of vinegar and water 50 50 and you just try to spray some large drops onto the window and i'm covering up the entire surface that's one of the reasons i didn't worry about spraying and making the backs of these all pretty because i knew that one i was going to be doing this effect on some of them and most of them we were going to be getting that paper backing you're not even going to see the back so yep now that i had that on i put the mirror effect on in a nice coat let that dry and sometimes you can help it along with a blow dryer <laughs> you can tell when it is dry and then i like to take kleenexes to dab off the water spots and that'll leave those little holes behind that gives it that antiquing effect and there's no pattern to the kleenexes so you're not making any marks in the paint and i keep flipping until i get a dry spot so i'm not putting that wet kleenex taking some of that mirror effect off so i'll do two to three layers depending on how i think it looks when i look at the opposite side so see how i'm just trying to get big drops and with that water vinegar mixture 
Then I'll spray the mirror effect. This is the Rust-Oleum one. This one I am a fan of. It does it beautifully. So I just spray a nice coat and then dry that again with the blow dryer because I'm impatient for things to dry. And then same thing, use some dry Kleenexes to dab off those water spots. Before I used black as my backer to really help it mirror effect, but I had read somewhere or somebody commented about doing a bronzy gold color on the back. So I thought I'm gonna try that. Now, I, as you saw, I did spray some of the water vinegar mixture because I don't want it to be solid either. So this is just actually Dollar General. <laughs> I just happened to remember when I was at that store one day that, hey, I want that type of paint. So yeah, so just doing something on the back of it just to make it really mirror from the front. And we actually put the backing on this to protect that fresh coat of mirror going on there. And now I can attach this transfer. The, of course, that oh finding center type of thing. have my transfer on I'm just going to seal the transfer in with some clear wax this is min wax soft wax so I'm just going to try to keep it on the transfer itself but if I get a little bit on the mirror it really does just come off with the Norwex cloth Okay, have you seen these chickens yet? So, oh my gosh, yes, another one of a row cycles paper. Oh my goodness. So I will link the store that I get all my paper from um, off the Etsy. Oh my goodness, super fast shipping you all. So these chickens are, and these baby cows are so cute. But I did these chickens earlier on a window similar that was a, it wasn't really a window, it was just the frame that I had thrifted on a, a different video. And they just turned out so cute. So even though these don't fit this entire six pane window, I'm going to make it work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the mirror effect on that area where the clear glass is. So what I'm doing now is I'm making sure that I've pretty much centered my chickens, kind of like they're peeping in your window. It's so cute. So I have a Sharpie that you can take off a of glass. You, you know, it rubs off a of glass. So I'm just tracing where my animals are, and then I'm going where the outside of the paper is also. I'm gonna be using that same technique I did on the first mirror effect window where I'm taking the mirror effect by Rust-Oleum, the water and vinegar 50-50 mixture, but I'm staying away from those lines that it's okay for it kind of to fade onto the lines, but I have my general area where I wanna spray the mirror effect. I did three coats to make sure that I was completely covered. I'd rather do little by little than putting too much on. So I did that same where I watered the side so it wasn't that crisp, sharp edge. As you see, the edges of the paper are now jagged. And now I'm going to... Now this was a little bit more difficult because I don't want to cut it at the slats because it would elongate the chicken's head faces so I'm going to just try to very gingerly um, working from the center of the paper out and try to make it so it it works so yeah it's not going to be quite a tight fit because of the the framing in the inside but it, it it'll work so this is one of those <laughs> 
times where do what I say, don't do as what you see. If you see, I put too much Mod Podge on and it's onto that mirror effect. And because it's so fresh, once you go to remove the Mod Podge or you left it clear, you could still see it through the mirror effect. So note to self, just make sure that it goes just to that almost to the edge but not over the edge or it will kind of mess up your mirror effect but you can't go back in time now i don't want to start over but i will make it work here's where I'm trying to touch up where I got that glue onto the the mirror effect so yeah I was trying I'm trying to touch it up it, it's okay and most people won't know but we aren't we all critical of ourselves when we see something we're like ah oh, shoot I shouldn't have done that So out of the chicken of Rocycle's decoupage paper, this has to be my most popular. As soon as I put it in, no matter what I put it on, it does not last long in our booth. So I have actually done this one before with the mirror effect, but you know, they've sold. So I'm going to keep on doing it. It's just a cool chicken. And the nice thing about it is I always have this leftover piece that doesn't fit into the window and I get to use it on a stool. The tracing does on the opposite side. It just gives you a general area of where you can fade in the mirror effect, where you don't want to cover up what the image is. Yep, I'm going to remember not to put too much of the Mod Podge on so I don't have to deal with that again. So this way it won't have that shadow effect of where I had to remove it. Maybe if I would have left it alone, it would have just dried clear. It wouldn't have messed up, but I needed to add this backing color. So anyway, so as you see, I'm still working with it as the paper is still wet. It's going to stay on there. I'm going to cover it up. Uh, I just absolutely love the whole combination of all this. added bonus in this video we are doing some frames now this is kind of on the uh, I was a window at one time but now I'm just a frame oh this one is definitely worse for wear but it's got that old window look to it so Chris is getting it cleaned up I think it was a some that somebody used for a greenhouse and then I have this big guy that I could not pass up. And I thought if it fit in my Goodwill cart, I am bringing it home. There's no glass. It's just a six panel frame. Look at the price. $5.29. Would you all left it behind? It fit in my cart so I could still shop. And then I have this whole grouping of frames. I just, I love old frames. 
I especially when they have all these details and even this blue one has some detail so it, I, I'm not looking at the color I'm just looking at all that detail So just like the windows, there's always some prep. So there's always things that need to be taken care of, repaired. Sometimes the artwork, I don't know what happened to the artwork. I just buy an empty frame. I'm more excited to see an empty frame because I don't know the value of artwork. So I will walk away from a beautiful frame if it has some type of artwork in it because I don't know. So anyway, so yep, Chris is going to, we are always tag teaming a lot of these projects. So he is the one that's going to be working on most of the frames, taking them apart. Because he is the one that's going to be cutting up the pallet wood to put in the back of the frame. So a lot of these ones have that inner where the artwork was. But sometimes you need to pop that out so you have something to glue and attach your pallet wood to. So that is what he's doing. Removing the old hanger system. Any nails, anything that would cut up anybody's wall. And along with taking that inner frame out so he has something to attach things to. So if you all did not know, Chris works for a pallet shop. So he, we are lucky enough that he doesn't just have to dismantle any pallets to get the wood. He does have to purchase it. It's not free, but he do, at least we don't have to dismantle the wood. So it's been a while since it's been cost efficient to be able to buy, to resell. So it's nice to be able to get some of these frames done. So what he did was just cut the pallet wood down to size. Now he's putting a bead of tight bond glue because of course you don't want it to come apart on anybody before nailing, brand nailing the slats in. So now that Chris has all the pallet wood in these frames, I taped off the pallet wood. I'm going to get the frames all cleaned up and we're going to give them a new look with some paint. But first, my end result is going to be white. So I see, I already foresee a little bit of problem. I've got some raw wood. I don't care about that. It's going to look fabulous once it's all painted up. But I am going to go ahead with a couple coats of shellac on some of these really red frames that may yellow my white paint along with that raw wood. Now this frame is really shiny. I don't want to spend the time to sand it. So I'm going to seal that shiny gold paint in with some Rust-Oleum paint and primer in the flat black. Along with this blue one, I'm going to be doing the crackle effect on these if you haven't guessed that, if you're a regular viewer. So I don't want that blue to be the color that's going to show through. So I'm going to go ahead and spray these up with the black and then we will seal them in with polycrylic to make sure that black stays on do the crackle effect i just have a dollar tree glue i put it in a bowl i brush it on and yes it just does amazing i'm going to start off with this frame i didn't do anything to this frame other than clean it so just depending on how much glue you get here and there is where your crackles so i'm just going to cover up the entire frame and if you don't want it put it in a bowl you could squeeze it onto your frame also i just have multiples that i'm doing so yes so all these frames are going to get a coating of glue
need to let your glue dry just a smidgen just so it has a skim coat so when you go to put your paint on you're just not mixing the paint and the glue together and I notice if you do that that's where you kind of get smaller crackle crackles so if you want bigger crackles just you can wait or I just did a whole bunch of multiple so or you can take a blow dryer heat gun and dry it just a little bit so it's a nice heavy coat. I think that's why I like this. I've said this in past videos is it's a one coat coverage. You don't really want to go back over where you have applied the paint. It smears it. So yep, just load that brush right up and get that paint on. Now I it will drip. So make sure you have it in a surface that is going to catch your drip. So it kind of just runs over and you just let it do what it does. letting all my frames sit overnight it crackled beautifully look at that oh there's just something about that so it seems like a lot of work but it's minimal compared to painting a whole bunch of coats of white sanding you just let it do what it does and so now I'm going back in and to tie the pallet wood together with the frame so it doesn't look so in your face kind of pallet wood I'm just doing a dry brush with that same kills paint and primer in one whatever your paint choice is now I didn't have any luck crackling with chalk paint so I've only ever I just as a positive that I know it's going to crackle, I just use the regular Kills paint or something like that. I, I have not had any luck with it crackling with chalk paint for some reason, if you all had that experience or, you know, give anybody a hint because I do get those comments down below. So yes, I'm just dry brushing a very minimal paint, just letting it touch those marks, those raised areas of this pallet wood. And as I am dry brushing the pallet wood, Chris is then taking them and putting a hanger, hanging system on there. So he will give two different options. One will go one way, one will go the other way. So whoever buys this has the option of hanging it whichever way they have or can for the space that they have. To add something to some of these pallet wood frames. Now, before in the past, I've sold them with a wreath of some sort on and they sold and then I found out that through one segment people just wanted the frame and they would add their own wreath or what have you but now it seems like we're back again where somebody wants it to be finished so I'm constantly looking when I'm thrifting or looking for items that are cost efficient to put on these so this is a Hobby Lobby little wreath I think you can actually buy it at Walmart too um maybe Amazon I don't know I'll have to look to see if Amazon carries this <laughs> cute little balsam wood Wreath. So all I'm doing is taking my watered down antiquing wax to give this uh, bright wood some age. I have this gather. Now I've put this combination together before and it has sold really well. So I want to give a little bit of age to this galvanized metal. So I've got the vinegar salt mixture in the spray bottle um, to see if I can give it a little bit of age. So actually, I don't know, the previous mixture that I had done earlier on an outdoor project, um, I think it did a little bit better when I added the hydrogen peroxide, but somebody, I got lots of comments like, oh, that just works. So I tried it, it didn't do it, it didn't even move anything. So I'm taking some steel wool, why it still has that on there, hoping that it has a chemical reaction. And yet again, it still didn't do anything. So I just went to my patinas and gave it a little bit of age. Now to attach this piece of wood doing some brad nails, be careful not to split that wood. The pallet wood itself is not an even surface and then just hot gluing the gather onto it.
So this is what I say. I'm constantly looking for something, even in the thrift store. So I love this green pitberry wreath. Not a fan of the raffi on the little rusted heart. So I'm going to go ahead and take that off. And so yeah, when I'm out and about looking, yes, I could go and buy some Hobby Lobby, which I always ha end up having to do when we're doing a grouping. But that increases the price of what I can resell these for. So, uh, yeah. So, when we're getting into the windows and the palette frames, these are not a cheap item to resell. It takes time to do all this. So, anywhere from the $35 to the $75 price range is what we price these at. Other than that wooden wreath, usually the wreaths we just hang with a J-hook. That way, if the buyer wants to change the wreath out, they don't have that sticky mess of hot glue left behind or trying to take out nails. So that's usually the way that I like to attach the wreaths. So I hope you absolutely love today's video and I hope I have inspired you to look at old windows. If you always see them in a trash pile, you think, oh, they're worse for wear. Yeah, a lot of times they are, but all the character, the the visual they give when they're hanging on a wall and they're all prettied up into your home decor. Oh my goodness. I just, I love that character. And I try to keep it really simple. <laughs> I try not to make too much work to scare anybody off, but yes transfers, decoupage paper, the mirror effect. Oh, wow. They just transfer a piece into, yes, just beauty, just pure beauty to add into your home decor. And they do resell. I am very blessed that, um, yes, I was in need of doing some windows, but when I do a group of windows, it takes up our whole shop. So that's the only project I can be working on at that time. So along with being able to crick it out or just, you know, stenciling something on a window, Oh, yeah. So I will share it. Everything's down in the description box that I used, I hope. If I forgot something, please let me know and give me a, you know, quick comment. Have I inspired you? Do you already do windows? Are you going to try any of these techniques yourself? And along with those pallet wood frames, oh goodness, that's something we did have to wait on for the wood to go down a little bit. But oh, I just love the hardest part of that project is finding a wreath. Sometimes they sell without a wreath. 
and then sometimes they do, but um, my last batch did not. My first batch did either way, didn't matter. And then my next batch, it didn't matter. And then this last batch before this needed a wreath. So I'm gonna go with the wreath. So yeah, and it doesn't have to be a wreath. It could be greenery, it could be paper, it could be wood, just something that somebody has a finished piece to put into their home decor and just hang it on the wall. So thanks for watching today's video guys. And always, as always, if you are part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out our channel for the first time and you liked what you saw, please give us a like and hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video and we will see you next time guys and you can see what we're up to. Bye!